this is the underside of one of the shells and it's concave like a cereal bowl but it's very shallow you can see all the lines coming out of it here's one that was aged and cracked prior to it being fossilized possibly the shell is under a lot of pressure from sediments up above and uh, shows the uh, material itself was cracking under pressure prior to it being fossilized Many of these brachiopods, especially the larger ones, had many other animals uh, attached to it. I'm going to show you some of those now. Um, this row here shows the inarticulate brachiopods. There are three here. They look like little ovals. They're very subtle. Hard to see, but on the next one, right up above, much easier to see. They look like domes. So it's not attractive. It just almost looks like warts. Warts on top of a seashell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven on the specimen. So think of the inarticulates as the primitive forerunner of the seashells. This one is attached to the underside of the shell. Here it is a little bit larger on the outside of the shell. Top surface of the shell. Here are two more inarticulates on top of this one and one big one on this one. This is a raffinus squeenus shell and it has a bryozoan colony on maybe 15 percent of it. It looks like a rough texture. Bryozoans are similar to coral. They can be twig shaped and fan shaped but they're also an enveloping encrusting shape. They'll just take on any blobular shape. One below it the same thing. Also on the left hand side. This one, by coincidence, there happened. This brachiopod has several zygospira cemented and stuck within it. It was just a neat juxtaposition between the smallest and the largest brachiopod we find in the Cincinnati. Doesn't mean they were necessarily living side by side, but they got swept in together. And just some of the matrix sometimes sticks one animal to another, even though they they might not have been uh, living side by side. Sometimes that's the case, sometimes it's not. This is a fragment of uh, Brachiopod, but look at all the bryozoan colonies taking off and starting to grow on it. And they're all individual little tiny areas. So the bryozoans were going crazy and growing on this thing. Bryzoan is a colonial animal, so it's one little chamber on top of another. Okay, note what's going on in this brachiopod. It has scar marks in the shell. Something was boring into and eating through the shell itself. And so some of these holes, some of these, these holes are actually elongated. Something was almost like drilling right through it. Here's another shell with more borings. Here's a nice, healthy, clean shell. The one right next to it. Look at all the history this has. All the predatory attack. Uh, snails would come along and they have rasping, file like tongues. Uh, it would be incorrect to call it drilling down, but they, uh, in and out, all, I won't, wouldn't compare it to a woodpecker, but by a motion that's back and forth and rasping like, predatory snails in today's modern seas will do the same thing. They will attack and eat, bore right through shells to eat at the animal on the inside. And that's exactly what you see. A snail went to town and was just uh, really making mincemeat out of the shell. This is kind of cool to see one, this one extensively uh, bitten through so many times. Of course, bite, bite's the wrong word, but you get the idea. It was, uh, that rasping tongue was drilling through its, uh, protruding and creating friction and pulverizing the shell to get at what was inside of it. Second in size to the smallest, Zygospira. The next, Oninella is maybe the second smallest brachiopod. A picture of my thumb for scale. So these are about a little bit larger than a fourth of an inch across, and they're just smothering some of the rocks. Again, another 
zone. This is an Oninella zone. That means they're all living together as a community, living side by side, breeding like crazy. Now keep in mind, the fossils that I'm showing you, Cincinnati fossils are usually gray, and the fossils may appear white or dark gray or chocolate. On rare occasions I've seen the uh, seen it actually kind of reddish tint to it. But the ones I have right here for you are a grayish tint. Here's Theradonta. Here's a slab Theradonta layer. It's just beautiful to find uh, these types of rocks with clusters of fossils like this. I just love it. I collect a ton of them, bring them home, put them around my yard. Being a fossil lover, I uh, bring home and surround myself with the things that I love. And uh, so I decorate and collar my trees with them, put them upright so I can see them. Everybody else can too. It doesn't take long to figure out I'm a fossil nut by walking around my house and yard. the backyard. I've collared the uh, patio with a lot of uh, fossils. It's fall right now, so a lot of them cover up at least. This is by the front of my house. I just have them set up here in, in a row all along the bushes, edge of the house, even the front of the house. Kind of covers up the concrete. Put them everywhere. That is Trophia. There's several different divisions within that alone. Small, large, wide. These are a little bit smaller than a golf ball. These are a real joy to find, and this brings back memories of when I first got started as a teenager collecting fossils. There are tons of these in the creek behind my school when I was about a young teenager. Collected these by the bucket full. They're just a beautiful, beautiful fossil. So easily to fall in love with finding these. And they're just, the way I hold them now is you'll find them, they're clean by the rain. So you don't have to do anything to clean them up. They're just coming out of the ground like that. So they're just beautiful testament to nature's knickknacks. Nature's mineralized uh, remains of Paleozoic creatures. It's just a real wonder. What's unusual about the rock I'm about to show you is it has... By chance, uh, the rock is broken along the edges. You can see the platystrophia and they were hollow on the inside filled in with calcite crystals a very common crystal that is inside many of her fossils you can see some of the crystals right there there's in the hollow empty chamber there it's kind of hard to see here's another one right there some of the crystals turn this over a little bit more crystals right there. Look at this one. Look at that big fossil crystal sticking out of that one. Huge, like a big spike. Here's another opening of a Platystrophia fossil with uh, two rather large crystal structures forming on the inside. Some people will actually take hammers and smash to see and reveal the crystals on the inside. It's almost like a, some of them are almost like a geode. I don't have the heart to do that. I just wait until I find one accidentally like that. <laughs> 